It's great to be joined on the program today by Professor Asa Auerbach, who is professor of physics at Technion in Israel and has also written a graphic novel, Max the Demon versus Entropy of Doom, which explains the generally complex concepts of entropy and the second law of thermodynamics in terms that we can all hopefully understand. Uh, it's so great to talk to you. Let's let's sort of start at the very beginning, the, the concept of entropy. I have read what I would consider to be a fair amount for a lay person about the concept, and it's still quite difficult for me to sort of explain it to someone else, which I think is sometimes a good way to 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 explore whether one actually understands something. Can they explain it to somebody else? So how can we start thinking about the concept of entropy? Well, entropy is a tricky subject to explain, and um, it's something that is taught only uh, at high-level uh, courses in universities. Um, there's a huge barrier for explaining entropy to most students, which is the math that you need to know, the multivariate uh, calculus, some uh, statistics, and so on. But uh, it's a very important concept, and uh, one that governs essentially the energy flow. and. Uh, it tells us, you know, how energy will flow from uh, hot to cold, uh, from low entropy systems to high entropy system, and uh, it tells us about uh, why pollution always grows. It's a concept that uh, is very crucial for understanding a lot of the problems facing our world, actually, including uh, global warming and other uh, energy crisis, uh, water pollution, and so on. So. Uh, now that I said it's an important concept and it's a tricky one to explain, I think that um, there are actually certain um, ideas that people connect to that can give a long way towards uh, understanding entropy, and that's the relation between order and disorder. Uh, a system that is ordered naturally becomes disordered under time. Uh, we know that from daily experience. And uh, entropy is, in a sense, measuring the amount of disorder in a system, but one has to define what you mean by order and disorder. But it's something that uh, intuitively a lot of people connect to. So we thought that in this comic book, we can actually uh, make it more accessible, make entropy more accessible to lay people without going through the math by connecting to the ideas of uh, disorder. So maybe let's do a couple of examples, if we can, when we think about the concepts of of order and disorder. Can you give us one example of how over time we would naturally expect to see more disorder? Right. Well, we, we have daily experience that, uh, you know, when you let a kid loose in a room and all the toys are ordered on the shelf after a while, uh, all the uh, toys are scattered around without any particular order. And that's something that happens naturally. And if you keep on waiting, it won't order itself. Now, that's a, uh, an example from uh, human behavior. But it also happens when you mix milk in the tea. I mean, you just put the milk at one particular point in the tea. And after a while, the milk is spread all around. So the position of the milk molecules become highly uh, spread out and uh, less ordered. That's an interesting um, yeah. one because, and I think that that's a good one because sometimes I, I, some of the most effective examples that I've read about how to understand the concept of entropy are those which explore that you could not possibly uh, go backwards in some of, with some of these examples. In other words, once you imagine putting milk into tea, you initially see sort of a division between the milk and the tea and whether or not you start stirring to sort of homogenize that mixture of milk and tea. There's really no way to undo that process. There's no way to separate the milk from the tea back out. And for me, that's been a crucial aspect of understanding this concept. Right. This is a demonstration. I wouldn't call it understanding from the physicist's point of view, because you just look at the phenomena and you say, oh, I recognize this. So that's a good demonstration of entropy increasing over time and not decreasing. Um, the reasons for that are actually quite deep. And uh, it took a long time until physicists actually understood the reasons for disorder always to grow. That's called the second law of thermodynamics. For a long time, the second law was actually an axiom. It was another postulate that you added to the classical mechanics we all know of Newton. Um, but uh, 
Much later, it was understood that this is actually a natural course of events when you have many, many particles in the system. When you have lots and lots of what you call degrees of freedom, uh, the uh, chaotic motion of particles which interact with each other leads to the increase of entropy and to the second law of thermodynamics. Now, uh, the, the comic book that we wrote was about an imaginary creature that Maxwell, the famous physicist that uh, invented electromagnetism, thought about as a way of disputing the second law. He said, uh, there could be a creature, essentially like our, ourselves, that would put order in things, and you won't have to spend any energy doing that. You will just have to open and shut the door and order things, uh, separate, uh, high, separate the gases uh, uh, between two different compartments uh, into a high pressure and a low pressure, or a hot and a cold, or reverse essentially the arrow of time by just observing the different particles and allowing and disallowing them to move in certain ways. And that was uh, a puzzle, that was a paradox that kept physicists busy for more than 60 years or 70 years until it was understood that such a creature cannot exist and therefore the second law of thermodynamics was saved. This is actually the topic that is explained in, uh, in our book. It's, it's the fact that a Maxwell demon is a demon. He's, he's not something that we can design, uh, let's say, nowadays with uh, robots and uh, nanoelectronics. It's uh, an impossibility in physics. And it's a quite uh, a tricky subject to, uh, to understand. Um, and why is it important to the sort of day to day lives of humans? In other words, conceptually, we may or may not understand entropy in the second law of thermodynamics. But in, in what ways does this impact our lives? Well, the second law impacts our life immensely. Uh, the fact that uh, we can only uh, get useful energy from low entropy sources, which is uh, fuel, sunlight, and so on. And we can't use all the immense amount of energy that we have in just tap water, just from the heat of uh, the temperature of uh, the oceans. We can't use that energy. Um, this is a, a consequence of the second law. And when we want to understand uh, how, where we can get energy that we could use from and where we cannot, we have to know the second law. So this is why it's important for our daily lives. It also tells us that uh, what we have to concentrate on is not the energy, but the lower entropy. So uh, it focuses discussions on the right topic, and most, uh, I think most people in the public are not really aware of the importance of understanding entropy. So this is uh, connected to our, uh, you know, uh, our problems of uh, energy and pollution, but conceptually, I think it's important to understand um, that the laws of nature have this uh, natural increase of disorder. It's, uh, it's something that uh, is one of the most fundamental laws that uh, even uh, Albert Einstein claimed. He believes that this is the one law that will never be proven incorrect. So it's a, it's, it's a very important law in physics and engineering. And uh, as I said, it's, uh, it's a bit tricky to explain why this law exists in uh, the face of uh, ideas like Maxwell Demon or um, mechanized Ma Maxwell Demon that people have tried to uh, create and failed. So that's motivation we have. I encourage the audience to check out the graphic novel Max the Demon versus Entropy of Doom. We've been speaking with Asa Auerbach, who is professor of physics at Technion in Israel. Uh, so great to speak to you today. Well, thank you very much.